I'm Derek Walker, I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and we are in a series on being a disciple of Jesus. And part of being a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, involves submission to his authority and following him. And we've been sharing that one reason why I think uh, all of us, to some degree, can find that difficult is because we are trying to do this, we're trying to live the Christian life in our own strength. Or in other words, we, we are trying to, we haven't got the revelation fully that actually we no longer belong to ourselves, that we don't own ourselves, that we, in accepting Christ, we give up our independence and we surrender that to God and we, we, we become his. And once we realize that we are owned by him and he has that authority over our life, then to surrender to him every day is then a natural thing. It just flows out of that. And so we need to understand that God has a twofold claim over us. He created us. And, and by virtue of that creation, we didn't create ourselves. He created us. On that basis alone, he owns us and we belong to him. And he has the right to define our lives. Once we embrace that truth in our heart, it can be very liberating because we can let go of having to control everything ourselves. Um, and that's the problem because when man sinned, when Adam sinned, the essence of that sin was to reject God's, not just God's authority, but God's ownership of us. And Adam and Eve, what they did was that they wanted, they fell for the temptation to cast God's ownership aside so that they could own themselves, so that they could be their own people, so that they um, could be their own God having the knowledge of good and evil in themselves so that they could operate independently from God. That's the very essence of sin. And it was that covetousness, that desire to be their own God and to have and own things for themselves independently of God, that was the essence of sin. And that cut them off from the life of God and they died spiritually. And it they cut them off from the blessings of God in the garden. They were thrown out of the garden. But... God did not finish with mankind. And then through, uh, through birth, the sin nature, that they didn't get set free like Satan promised them. Oh, you'll be free. No, they, came, they became slaves of sin and of Satan himself. And uh, that sin nature, that desire to be independent from God, to be our own owner, to own ourselves, that got transmitted down. It's called the, the flesh, the nature of the flesh. And we all have that, that sin nature in the flesh now. And, and, that, and so we have this thing in us that resists the ownership of God in our life. And so we want to own things. We want to, to have these things independently from God. And we want to own ourselves. And that is the problem we face. But Jesus came to win us back and through his blood on the cross he paid the price first of all to redeem us to purchase us to God which means he paid the price to satisfy and and release us from the claims of sin in other words to release us from that slavery that's what redemption is he's paid the price the ransom price to set us free from that slavery to sin and and the satan but it wasn't so we would be totally free unto ourselves. It would be so that we would now belong to God. And so we've been purchased for God. And so we, God has a second claim on us now. If we've accepted that purchase, we've been set free from that slavery to sin. But now we are slaves of God. We belong to God. We need to embrace that truth. And I want to, to show us this in Revelation chapter 4 and 5 in the events of heaven and the songs in heaven realize how we are to relate to God now. 
and, and I found these very inspirational. If we go to Revelation 4.10, first of all, it talks about the 24 elders. Now, the 24 elders represent the church in heaven, because at this point, the church is raptured to heaven. And they're represented by the 24 elders who are men. They are the leaders of the church in heaven. And um, the, so the church is raptured before the tribulation begins in the following chapters. But notice what they sing. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him. You see, worship is the surrender of ownership. Worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying... You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power. And what they were, they weren't just talking abstractness, abstractly, they were talking about the fact that they had received glory. The glory of God is surging through their beings. They received honour from God. They've received power. Praise God. And now, they are surrendering that back to God because they are acknowledging that they don't own it. They are owned by God and everything they have comes from God and is for God's glory. And because God owns them and those blessings, they, they give that back. They surrender that back to God. You are worthy to receive glory and honour and power. We thank you for the glory you've given us, Lord, and we surrender it back to you. It's all for you. And this is the basis of their surrender. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. And so they understand that they do not operate independently from God. That the glory and the honour and the power they have is God's. They are God's. They, they belong to God because God created them. And it was God who chose to create them. And their existence, moment by moment, is because God wills it. And therefore God has the right of ownership over them. And that's the basis for their surrender to God. So that's the first thing. In Revelation 5 now, it goes, takes it one step further, and it starts talking about redemption. Now to set the scene, God gave the picture of this with Israel. You see, Israel were given the promised land. They had possession of the pro promised land, but God had the ownership. But they were able to possess the promised land and enjoy it. And that's a picture of the blessings that we have. And what happened if every Israelite would have a piece of that promised land? And uh, But, for instance, if they sinned, if they did something wrong, they could lose possession of that land. They'd get into debt which is a picture of sin, and they would lose the possession of the land and somebody else would take over that land. And they might even lose possession of themselves in that to pay off their debts, they would have to sell themselves as a, as a servant to someone else. And that, they would continue in that state until a redeemer came along. Now, a redeemer had to be a kinsman redeemer, that is a relative, and this redeemer could come, and if he had the wealth, he could pay the redemption price, and that would release that man from that, from being a, a servant to, um, and also, it would redeem the land. That land would be, would be purchased back, and now that man could live in that land again and possess it. Although the redeemer would keep the ownership of it. And so this is also a picture of the big picture because the earth itself is, is like the land. And mankind, because of Adam's sin, man was given possession of the earth, given dominion over the earth, given the right to possess the earth. But Adam gave that up to, to Satan. And now God kept the ownership, but the possession was given up. And, um, and also, mankind themselves were now given up. They were now under slavery to sin and Satan. And so because of sin, they had lost possession of the land and they had lost possession of themselves even. They were now slaves uh, to sin. But praise God, Jesus is our Redeemer. 
So Jesus became a man because he had to be one of us. He had to be a relative. He became our kinsman redeemer. And on the cross, with his blood, Jesus purchased the earth and everyone who lives on the earth. Jesus paid the price to redeem the earth and the people on the earth. Praise God. So now the earth, which has gone into the wrong hands, Jesus has now purchased. So he has won back the possession of the earth, which, which is the basis for, this, for the return of Christ. Because Jesus has the right, in fact, for 2,000 years almost, he's had the right to take back possession of the earth. And that's what he's going to do in the tribulation. He's going to move in judgment. And at the second coming, he's going to establish his kingdom on the earth. And the basis for it is his redemption. And that's why there's this singing in heaven just before the tribulation, the day of the Lord, because he, he is claiming his right to take possession of the earth because he's purchased it with his blood. But he has, as we're going to see in these songs, he did not just purchase the earth, he purchased us unto God. So he purchased us from the power of sin and Satan so that we could belong to God. And he did that with his blood. Praise God. And so that's the background to, to this passage. And so God is our owner. And Christ is our Redeemer and therefore our Possessor. And uh, let's have a look now in Revelation 5 and see what's going on here now. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on a th th throne the scroll written inside and on back, sealed with seven seals. Now this scroll is the title deed of the earth and it would include in that the, the a separate scroll for each human being. And so this scroll is the title deed, which, which is the record that Jesus Christ has purchased the earth and all the people on the earth, all right? And that means he has the right to do with it as he pleases. He's purchased it. Now, he is presenting the scroll. The scroll is being given to him because now God, is, God the Father is giving him permission now to take possession of the earth. And the first thing he has to do is establish his right to do that. So he is taking this scroll, which is the title deed, and he's going to open it stage by stage. And that's going to, uh, as he reads it, that will establish his authority uh, on the earth. And God has the scroll on, of your life because he's purchased you. You belong to him and he has the right to define your whole life. He is the owner. The scroll establishes his ownership. And so it says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. And here we see that Jesus is worthy because he's the redeemer. He has purchased the earth and its people with its blood. And because he's the redeemer, he's the possessor, he is worthy to open the scroll. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns. Now that represents the fact Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth. And that means he's got all authority over you too. All authority. He owns you. The seven horns. And then it says the seven eyes. And that speaks of the fact that he has all knowledge and all wisdom and all understanding. And it says they are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And then he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. 
and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And here it says that <coughs> Christ is worthy because he has purchased us with his blood. We belong to God. Hallelujah. And he's actually purchased the whole earth too. And so he has the right to claim, total claim and authority over our life. And so these people who are singing, they know that they belong to Christ. They know that every blessing that they have also belongs to Christ. And that's why they sing the next verse of the song. And in this next verse, they are surrendering the power and the riches that they've received. They surrender it back to God because they know it doesn't belong to him. And, and basically, when you surrender what you have to God, that allows God to give you more of it. And, and I want you to see these seven things. And you can incorporate this in your prayer life because when, what they sing now is this. Worthy is the lamb who was slain of the blood to receive power to receive power in other words they are experiencing God's power and now they're surrendering that power back to God in other words it's talking about basically power to do works that's what power is the the power to do this stuff to do works to do miracles to just to do our work whatever we do they are surrendering that back to God. In other words, our, even our works are to be surrendered to God. They, so that we do them independent, depending on God. And that we do them for His glory and for His purpose. And the power to do these works, we acknowledge, isn't from ourselves. It's from God. God is the source of all that power. And so we give Him the glory for all the things we're able to do. And so we are submitting also to his power. We're acknowledging that the power we have comes from God and we are submitting to his power. Worthy is the lamb to receive power. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have, we possess this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. In other words, we have this power. We possess the power of God, but in earthen vessels. In other words, we don't have that power in ourselves. The power of the Holy Spirit that flows through us, we, we possess it, but we don't own it. That the excellency of the power might be of God, might be owned of God. We've got to, to if we want more of God's power to flow through us, we have to surrender whatever powers God gives us we offer them back to God. Worthy is the Lamb to receive power. We're surrendering that ownership to Him. Because otherwise, if we hold on to that power, uh, if we take credit for that power as if it was our power, we block ourselves from the blessing of God. And then he says, worthy is the Lamb to receive riches. And that means your wealth. Everything you own. Or everything, you're not the owner, you're just the steward. But everything you have belongs to God. And so we need to acknowledge that. Worthy is the Lamb to receive all our riches. And so we're, we're saying, Lord, although this is money I have, it's ultimately it's your money. And therefore I, I am to use it for your purposes, for your glory. We are just the manager of God's resources. And so we, when God tells us to give, we must give. And then he says, worthy is the Lamb to receive wisdom. So whatever wisdom you have, whatever ideas you have, you're to give them back to God. You're to surrender them back to God. And this includes knowledge and understanding, which is the basis for wisdom. Wisdom is, is, is knowing how, how to live, knowing what to do. Acknowledge God as the source of your creative ideas. Give thanks to God that, that it wasn't your wisdom, it's his wisdom. And therefore it's, it's to be used for his glory, for his purposes. Return those thoughts back to God. And so you can relax, you see, because you, not, you don't have to hold on to wisdom in yourself. You just need to open up to God, who's the source of all wisdom. And so if you don't understand something now, it's okay. Surrender it to God, and God will give you the understanding in, in, in due time. And so re release that wisdom back to God. So God has the control of it. Often when we hold on to thoughts, 
in covetousness. We want to hold on to those thoughts. We block the blessing of God. But if we'll surrender what, that maybe God shows us a little bit of something, if we surrender it back to God, that frees God to bless us with, with an increase of that wisdom. But the more we hold on to it, we cut ourselves off from that supply. The river of God has to flow through us. And for it to flow through us, we have to receive it by faith, but then we have to give it back to God in love. Surrender it to him. Then the next thing is strength. He says, worthy is the lamb to receive strength. Do you realize your physical strength, your physical health, your spiritual strength, your moral strength, your intellectual strength, the strength of your will, your emotional strength, your sexual strength, your vigor, that is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. It's the grace of God. But you don't earn it. You need to give it back to God. You need to say, thank you, Lord. That's the strength I have. It comes from you. And I surrender it back to you. And when you do that, now God can fill you even more with his strength. You see, as, as long as you will own nothing, then God will can bless you with everything. You can possess everything God has for you. Blessed are the poor for they will be rich. In other words, if you don't own it, you can possess it. Hallelujah. We need to realize that your strength is of God and God owns that. And so offer it back to God, surrender it to God so that your strength is used for him. And then he says, worthy is the lamb to receive honor. Now, honor is weight value, importance, authority, status, exaltation. So the honor that you have in your life comes from God. You can't manufacture honor. It comes from God. But if you want to grow in honor, then you need to surrender that honor back to God for him to use that honor. It's not for your own sake. That honor is to be used for his glory. If God exalts you uh, and gives you greater honor, then that is to be used for God, for his glory. And then he says, and glory. Worthy is the lamb to receive glory. This is a great prayer to pray that covers all the areas of your life. Now, glory is the outshining of God through you. It's his manifested love, his anointing, his, um, his yes, his glory. And the glory that you have, and the love that you have, that comes from God. Acknowledge that God is the source and God is the owner of your glory. And as you offer your glory to God, then God can give you more glory to shine with. But if you hold it onto it, you block that blessing. And finally, blessing. Worthy is the lamb to receive blessing. And this blessing simply means blessedness or happiness. All happiness comes from God. Emotional enjoyment experiences that that give us pleasure and again what do we do with that do we try and if we you see if we try and covet grab uh, create pursue our own happiness it will be elusive but it's only God God is the blessed God and it's God that can make us happy it's God that can give us happiness we must believe that God wants us to be happy but we've we can only be happy if we're holy we can only be happy if we're surrendered to God. And if we surrender to God as the owner of our happiness, then you can start to enjoy that blessedness. It's only if you let go and surrender it to God, then God can fill you with blessedness. See him as the source. Trust him as the source of your emotional well-being. Sur surrender your emotions to God and trust him to make you happy. Praise God. And then every creature in verse 13, it says, we're, we're singing as well. Blessing and honor and glory and dominion. The last one is an eighth one, actually. That last one, dominion, is the word kratos, which is ruling power. So it, our ability to master the things of life, our ability to rule and reign in life is kratos. And that is dominion. And that, again, whatever dominion God gives you, you surrender it back to God for his glory. And so this is the prayer that they pray in heaven. And this is the, what we need to do. We, c we don't own all these blessings. We must receive from El Shaddai. He gives us. In our weakness, we qualify to receive his strength. When we know that we don't own anything, 
then we can receive all the blessings he has for us. Praise God. And if we know he's the owner, then we can actually thank God for the blessings. That's the second stage. We need to, again, receive by faith his blessing. We thank him for it as the owner. We don't try and hold on to it. We don't try and covet it so that we can be independent of God. But we realize we are to receive these things constantly from God because we constantly depend on God. And so knowing that he's our owner, we release them back to God. We surrender them back to God. And then as we sow them back to God, as we sow all things back to God, we can believe God for the increase and the multiplication of the blessing. And that's the revelation of Jehovah Jireh. When Abraham offered up Isaac, that the most precious thing God gave him was Isaac. And because he surrendered Isaac back to God, rather than holding on to Isaac, he showed that he loved God by surrendering Isaac to God because Isaac came from God. Then God said, right, because you've done that, because you've not held on, because you released him back to me, therefore I will bless you. I will multiply the blessing upon your life. And when we release all the things God gives us back to him and surrender it under his control and acknowledge him as the source, that releases God Jehovah Jireh to multiply the blessing and increase the blessing and because Abraham did that God could multiply the blessing in his life and so the more we surrender to God's ownership the more God is able to fill us with all good things. Amen. In this series we are really learning what it is to be a disciple of Jesus and and understanding these things is what causes us to grow spiritually. And I've written a book called Growing Up Spiritually because God doesn't want us to stay babies. He wants us to grow strong in, in, as Christians. And so let me encourage you to have this book. Also, if you order the book, we'll send this to you free as well. It's the good news. It's my gospel booklet. It'd be great to refresh yourself in the gospel. And also you can use this to witness to others. So we'll send the good news free. Uh, if you order a copy of Growing Up Spiritually. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11am Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, ox 37 qh You can watch more of our teachings on our Roku channel and Derek Walker's YouTube channel. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products, where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.